Hi, my name is James Sanfin, and I'm going to be doing a wood turning demo. This is we teach a class, a uh, turning class at William Ings School of Fine uh, Woodworking, and we're going to start out today. We're going to make a walnut goblet. Oh. Basically, that's all we need to hold it. And this is going to be held by the chuck at one end, and then we're going to take the tailstock off and start turning the cup at this end. Get it in there nice and tight. Make sure it's uh, centered. Eh, it's close enough. Then we're going to turn the cup first, because uh, you, if you start removing all this material and then you try to uh, turn the cup, it'll just it'll just break off. So we want to uh, turn this while we still have a lot of mass here, so we can so we're able to dig in there without too much vibration. Now as I'm turning, I'm starting in the center, but as I bring this tool around, I pivot it so I stay in contact with the, around the, the crown here where I have a nice, what I call a sweet spot. If I, if I start hitting it on the wing here, it might want to grab. So as I'm doing this, I pivot this so it's, it's in contact over here. So I start in the center, and then as I'm coming around, I pivot it like that. See how I'm keeping the wing away from the side. Now the deeper I get in there, I'm going to lower the tool rest just a little bit so I can get more of an angle on it, and then I'll be able to do a, a cleaner cut when I get we want to go deep enough so we can get more than one swallow out of the wine glass. I usually go the depth of my thumb. We'll see. Now, as I get towards the end of this cut, I want to take shallower cuts so I can get a nice cleaner edge so I don't have so much to sand. All right, so now we're going to sand it. And we're, we're going to sand it, and then we're going to polish it. Because once we, once we leave this area, we can never go back. Because we're going to be turning this into a very thin stem. If you try to go back with any sandpaper or any kind of pressure, it'll torque the, the goblet right off. So we have to sand it in increments as we go. All right, so I'm going to start sanding this. I'm going to sand it with 100 first, and we're going to work our way to 400. First, I want to check and see that I don't have any torn end grain. So when I do continue sanding, just a little bit more. There's a couple of vibration marks in there. We'll get, to, get rid of those. All right, well, I'm down to my final grit. This is 400 grit, and I'm using 3M wet and dry sandpaper. And I like it because it, uh, it kind of polishes up the surface. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to take the uh, Triple E. I'm going to use a polish compound called Triple E and then a wax compound, which is called Shell Wax, which is a wax that also has shellac in it. Okay, this is the Triple E Ultra Shine. It's a polishing compound. It has a little bit of abrasive in it. And it polishes up the surface, but it also kind of seals it for the shellac. So we're just going to pick that in there. And we're going to do this as we go through the whole turning. We'll polish a section at a time. Okay, this is the shell wax finish. And it's a wax with, with shellac in it. And it's a friction polish. And I'm going to put it on before I start turning it. Now the shellac, you kind of have to work with it fast because it sets up fast. So you don't want to dilly or dally. Now you notice I'm using a paper towel rather than a rag. I use a paper towel because it, as we're doing this, if it happens to snag around the piece as it's turning, it'll just rip. If you have a rag and it catches around the, the piece, you might have a, a problem with it. Pulling the piece off or pulling your hand in and having an injury. It's a nice uh, close-up of the shell wax finish. Now I'm going to turn the outside of the cup. 
but I want to find out how deep this is, so I stick my pencil in there and I kind of run my thumb up there and eyeball it and come out to the outside and I mark it approximately where the bottom of the bowl is going to be. Now you can't see it as I'm turning, but when I'm making my soft curve, I keep my handle in my hip and I, I use my hip to help stabilize the cut. So as I'm coming down, I rotate my hip and I can get a nice smooth cut. I don't have a lot of bumpiness in it. Now as you notice as I'm turning, there's a sweet spot on each side of the crown of this tool, and I'll mark it with my pencil. This is where I get my, my shear cut. Okay, I'm not really turning on that tip. I'm turning to each side of that crown. So when I'm going to my left, I want to stay to the left side of that crown. When I'm going to turn details to my right, I want to stay to the right side. So as I'm coming down here to make this curve, you can see where the sawdust is coming off. It's not even touching the tip. And as I rotate the tool, I have to stay in contact with that spot. So I have to rotate the tool. Not only that, I have to pivot it, and I have to uh, pivot the uh, handle also. So you can see as I'm going to the left, I'm staying to the left of that crown. If you rotate this tool back accidentally, it'll grab that and pull it off. Now I'm going to sand the cup, and then we'll polish the cup, and then we'll we're going to work in increments. And I'm going to stay close to this mass so I don't get too much vibration. So I'll be turning about an inch at a time as I work my way down the stem. And we're down to the 400 grit now. This is the final sand before we polish. Okay, we're going to put the polishing compound on. Now I'm going to put it on prior to spinning this so I can make sure I can get it all on there get down into the crevices and then we're going to spin it you can see that walnut come alive always leave enough space between the tool rest so you don't pinch your finger in there that's not any fun okay so now we're going to switch over we're going to put the shell wax on. Look at this uh, walnut. Doesn't that come alive? Again, I'm going to do it as it's still. Got to work quick so it might splash a little bit, so watch the camera win. We're going to start turning the stem now. I do a little decorative uh, detail underneath the cup. See, I'm pretty aggressive because I'm close to this mass. So uh, I, can, I can work a little bit without the fear of it breaking off. Unless, of course, you get a catch. But you don't want to do that. So we're going to trim that back. All right, so we're down to the 400 grit. And then we're going to polish this. Again, to kind of recap, we're working one inch at a, at a time so we can stay close to this mass so we don't put too much pressure here. You can see this thing isn't uh, flexing, so it's nice and strong there. So we can get in there and sand, and now we'll do some polishing. As I'm turning this, I always remove the material before I start trying to make my final detail. I, want to, I don't want to have to be fighting the wood, so I get rid of as much material as possible before I finish my bead. 
Right, now we're going to start turning the stem. Now I try to make my goblet look as much like a regular glass goblet would look. Uh, so when I make my stem, I don't keep it straight all the way. I have a slight taper and it ends up being a little thicker at the bottom. I think it's a little more attractive. I switch, I've switched to a bigger gouge so I can do my straight part. And I'm, again, I'm not going to go too, too far away from the mass. I'm going to whittle my way down. I want to be careful not to run into this big mass here with this wing. I don't want it to grab because it will come out of the chuck. And it's always embarrassing if people are watching you do something and it flies across the room. So. So when I'm turning this stem, the straight part, I get this, this tool. I'm riding the back of the tools, riding the bevel, so I can, and I'm using my hip to kind of pivot the tool, and that helps me keep a nice straight cut. Notice how when I'm getting close to that mass, I'm pivoting that tool so that wing is kind of staying away from there. Okay, uh, we're about ready to start turning the base of this. As you notice, I've slowed it down quite a bit because this was really starting to move. Now when I'm doing a sharp corner like this, again, I'm riding on that sweet spot on this side of the crown. And as I go in almost at a 90 degree angle, as I get towards the bottom of the cut, I kind of rotate the tool. I lift the handle a little bit and I kind of do a score cut and then I open it up the face and pull it away so I can get a nice sharp detail. Now I'm going to do an OG shape towards the stem and as I'm going to go in almost at a 90 degree angle my bevel is going to be close to 90 degrees. That's what I'm going to use as my guide. Again, you can see I want to be on the other side of that crown, so my tool almost looks like it's upside down. I overcompensate a little bit, and as I rotate it back, you can see where it starts to cut. Once I get past the shoulder, I open the face a little, and I can get more of a cutting edge. So I can go in with my shape. When I get to the end of that cut, I kind of drop that tip in to kind of score it, and then I open the face just a little bit and pull it away. You don't want to open too much because you, you don't want to grab. So you have a nice, clean, sharp detail. Now I want to do a cove here. Again, notice how I overcompensate the chisel. I rotate it back till it starts to cut. Once I get past that shoulder, I open the face again. And I kind of swing my hips around to get that. Okay, as I've been sanding along here, I've been basically starting with the 150 because I've had a, a pretty soft detail. But here I'm, you know, this is edge grain, it's easier to sand. This is all end grain, so I'm going to come back in and start with the 100 grit rather than the 150. We're going to polish the base and then we're going to part this off. But we're going to part it off with a gouge rather than a parting tool. Because I want to turn the bottom and put a little decorative detail on the bottom. Okay, we're going in at a 90 degree angle. Before I get too far in, I want to do a little decorative detail, kind of a signature I have, so I'll just go ahead and uh, I will dig the rest of this out. Clean it up just a little bit. So now I'm going to reach over here. And there we go. We're ready to visit the wine garden for a little bit of Merlot tasting. Let's go. <laughs>